Yeah, that was the first one we did. Yeah, I think the Seattle was the first one. No, the Austin was the first one because I was there for it. In the Seattle, Austin was the one was the I went one. to because it was the oh. first one, but I didn't get to go to the. Oh, okay. I yeah. didn't go to the second one because it moved to the. No, the no, I guess you're right. Austin would have been first. But that that the cab driver we had was like Quincy Jones, except that he was like the Quincy Jones interviews with Alex Trebek because he talked to us in a in in a question format. Everything. That's like, funny. do you know what this is? It's like, no. <laughs> and Kim and I were looking at us in the back. He's like, should we just bail out of the cab right now? Unless something really bad happens. Let me grab my powder before we start. Okay, chat room. Okay, so good news. Uh, the Daily Tech Headlines skill is available in the Australian Amazon Echo store. Cool. Cool. Um, we had a bug submitting it the first time, but apparently that glitch went away. So that's fine. The German one, we finally figured out uh, you have to have your description in German. So thanks to Big Jim, who has some German coworkers, uh, we got a translation of our description and resubmitted it. So fingers crossed it'll be in the German. Now, the actual Daily Tech Headlines recording will be in English. But the the description in the store will be in German. You're not going to talk in German for us? Ah, uh, nein. <laughs> I think it would be really cool. Nein sprechen Sie Deutsch. Think you should do it. I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it in Esperanto. You should listen to me trying to speak German. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> I probably just find myself <laughs> shouting, trying, and people, and then really offending Germans who are like, well, that's not, that's not oh, how we talk. Fun thing. Well, yeah. maybe I'll save it for the post show. All right. Teaser <laughs> coming up after the show. Fun I got thing. For you guys. Something about Ed Sheeran. Stay tuned. <laughs> Ed Sheeran will be joining us. <laughs> here at Studio Feline in our post show. Stick will, around. No, this is how you do it. Will Ed Sheeran join us after the show? <laughs> Stick around and find out. <laughs> Sarah invited Ed Sheeran <laughs> to her studio. You'll never guess what happened. He's in love with the shape of you. Can you name him? We'll sign out at the end of the, end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. All right. Uh, well, we're about ready. Sarah, uh, we'll need you to do the pre-roll. Uh, can I can do that. Think if you of want something to count me in. fun to <laughs> compel people to support us. All right. Um, everybody else ready? Yep. Yep. Here we go. Three, two. Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, February 9th, 2018 from DTNS headquarters in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline at the beach, I'm Sarah Lane. And from Sailor Snub Studio, I am Shannon Ma Morse. <laughs> And my name wrong. <laughs> from the land, the Cleveland, that is, I'm Len Peralta. Yes, uh, take two for Shannon Morse. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> At least I don't. I won't feel bad the next time I mispronounce anyone's name. Uh, <laughs> mispronouncing my own name. I've done it before myself. Yeah. Uh, hey, producer Roger Chang is here too. Did I say your name right? Uh, yes, it is Roger Chang. You have enunciated correctly. Excellent. Well, big news in the world of ongoing tech companies suing each other broke today. We're going to talk about that in a little detail at later in the show, but it is the first of a few tech things you should know. That's right. On day five of the Waymo Uber trial, the two companies settled their disagreement out of court and the trial has been dismissed. Uber agreed to pay Waymo 0.34% of its equity, which is actually more money than you might think, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and not incorporate any Waymo confidential information into Uber hardware and software. We will discuss a little bit more with Shannon uh, in a few minutes. Yay. Yay. VLC 3.0 has arrived for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, Android TV, Apple TV, and Chrome OS. VLC 3.0 brings support for 4K and 8K decoding with less CPU consumption, 360 degree videos, direct HDR and Chromecast discovery, and they've also introduced support for H for high DPI on Windows 10, as well as Blu-ray disc menus, though decryption has to happen outside of VLC. Hmm. 3.0 launches today, and it can be downloaded directly via the App Store, Play Store, and via Videoland.org. 
DD Shushing and SoftBank are partnering on a ride hailing company to launch in Japan later this year. In Japan, ride hailing services can only match riders with professional drivers. So mostly with existing taxi drivers. DD and SoftBank service will use DD's deep learning system to make that matching system work. It'll roll out in Osaka, Kyoto, Fukuoka, and Tokyo to start. In the wake of Nest merging back into Google, Nest co-founder and chief product officer Matt Rogers announced he's leaving the company. Rogers says he wants to dedicate more of my time to Insight.org as well as to start thinking about the next adventure. Hmm, it gets hmm. intriguing. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit more about the tech news. What's next, Shannon? Beginning in July, Google Chrome version 68 will no longer have a neutral marker for sites without HTTPS. Instead, sites will be marked secure if they have HTTPS support and otherwise be marked as not secure. So that means that those HTTP sites that you run across, they will no longer look even remotely secure. They're going to mark those as being very, very insecure for anybody who's visiting those. Yeah, there's only two labels now. It's green and red. Uh, yeah. And I think this is good personally because I I think we've gotten into the habit of of thinking like, well, this one's okay, except right. maybe it's not okay one day. Maybe it has an element that shows up that's not usually there, that is insecure, uh, that would otherwise be secure if it was HTTPS, if it was SSL encoded. So I think this is clearer. And the thing to remember is saying it's not secure does not mean it's hacked. Does that right. mean you're vulnerable? It means this page has not been secured, you know, go at your own warning into into entering any information there. So right. What is Use the distinction caution. up until this point where some HTTP sites I would get a little red warning, but not all of them. Yeah, and I don't think you'll get the full blocked warning for HTTP sites in July, right, Shannon? It's it's just the warning is for we know there's a vulnerability here. The red icon says there's no SSL here, so you know, go at your own risk. And then the green says, you're encrypted with SSL, you should be all right. Right, exactly. And that's a really important part of this story is the fact that if, if I go to an HTTP site and there is some kind of login that's supposed to happen on that site, like username and password that I plug in, that if it's HTTP means that anybody that's on that network or anybody that is snooping on my computer, even if they aren't on the same network, could potentially see that username and password in plain text, which is, well, somewhat scary to be honest. Uh, as, soon, as soon as you plug in HTTPS with that SSL encryption, you do that little magic behind the scenes with security, then you get that encryption so that your username and password are no longer going to be plain text while somebody could still see what you're doing, it would be encrypted. So it would be much, much harder for them to obtain that username and password without like really, really good hardware that they would be able to use uh, to reverse engineer it over a period of like a few years. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I I know that some people feel, in fact, you know, people, there's a person in our Slack. I'm I'm not going to call him out on it, but uh, who's like, this is overkill. Why why do you need to? You don't need to secure every page. But I kind of feel like it's better to secure every page, even if it doesn't necessarily objectively need it, because you just get in the habit of securing everything. You're less likely to have something that should have been secured not be secured. It's training con consumers to understand yeah. that there's a huge difference between HTTP and HTTPS. So as soon as you see those markers, instead of having that neutral zone marker, uh, it gives you a much clearer idea of what you should expect from a website. Yeah. Facebook is testing a downvote option on comments to public page posts in the US. So Facebook says, this is for feedback purposes only. It's not going to display downvote counts on somebody's post, make them feel bad. We're not using it to affect any ranking. Downvote options include offensive, misleading, and off topic. So it's sort of like your little private way to say to Facebook, yeah, this isn't working for me. And Facebook somehow will use that data in the future to tweak its algorithm i don't know it it's weird right because they say at first i thought oh, okay we're not going to show it publicly that's good it's not a hate thing right. that will yeah. be yeah. tried to be gamed it's just like hey I, I think this is misleading but then they say it's not going to affect the algorithm so what are they going to do with it I, I guess it's more for broader research to say like oh the algorithm is showing these things but we get this many people saying they think it's 
bad. Well, it, so let's try to tweak the algorithm so that doesn't happen. Is it is it like a separation like that? Yeah, I mean, anytime a company's like, hey, we want feedback, you know, yeah. like giving you this tool to give us feedback that might change the algorithm in the future. They're just saying that it won't be automatically, you know, uh, you know, ranking posts that a, a lot of people say I are, see. are yeah. bad. You know, the thing about this is if it were only applying to an article that somebody shared, uh, I could see where this could be really helpful just to kind of like get a sense of what your user base is interested in. Right. Um, but if it's on a public post that's like a personal thing, you know, anything that's like thumbs down, you know, it, it always like, it kind of like, uh, it, it just doesn't, I don't know, it's like bad mojo because people are so <laughs> mean on the internet anyway. Well, and I think that's one of the reasons I'm glad they're not going to show a public yeah. count of that, uh, because it's less likely to encourage people to pile on like, oh, I see 75 negatives. Well, I'm going to add mine to that. Yeah, this thing sucks. And it is only public page posts. Uh, so if you're if you don't if you don't have a page, if you just have a personal account, wouldn't apply. And if you didn't make your page public, if it's a private page, then right. it wouldn't apply. Right. So, yeah, it's it's. In that sense, it's already geared more towards kind of like a business or a you know a, a show or or yeah, some like sort daily of a tech news show. Although <laughs> on Instagram, I know this is the case because people complain about it. You, there are also anonymous ways to like flag somebody's post, and so people get their accounts suspended all the time. Yeah, but it's like a bullying thing mm -hmm. rather than them actually doing something that's wrong. It's like a bunch of people were like, let's get this person, you know, to get in trouble and then have to like go, you know, through the hoops to get their account back. So just just saying Facebook's parent company of Instagram, I, I could see this sort of behavior um, uh, coming out negatively. But again, if it's not public. Yeah. And if they're only using it for research, only using it for feedback, uh, they're not implementing it directly. That helps mitigate a lot of these scenarios where people might try to game the system or use it to harass or anything like that. Scientists at Newcastle University in the UK have discovered a different form of 3D vision in insect, in an insect, uh, that may be easier to implement in robotics. Praying mantises are the only insect, or probably the only insect, I didn't actually look to make sure, but they are one of very few insects, if not the only insect, to have 3D vision. Insects usually don't need 3D vision. Uh, so to study how they see in 3D, these scientists used beeswax to put tiny 3D glasses on the praying mantises. Little blue <laughs> lens on one side, how? red lens on the how, other. That was such a wonderful story. I know, that alone. How does it exist? Makes <laughs> Uh, they found in their research that mantises track the change in relative position of a moving object to each eye in order to create stereo vision. And this is different than the way animals do it. Uh, humans use differences in multiple deals. Go go look up stereoscopic vision or 3D vision uh, and you will find a long list of all the different details that feed into uh, our way of telling 3D. What mantises do is much simpler. It's like, it's moving over here, here, and here, here. So we triangulate, boom, that's how we create 3D vision. And this might be very useful in robotics because it's a simpler system. It would require much less computation power uh, from the sensors on robots. Now I want a praying mantis. I mean, I, I kind of want one as a pet just so I can give it like 3D glasses because that's oh, just so freaking so cool. Though. What's that? They've got a whole thing. They can be very mean. Praying mantises can? Mm -hmm. Well, hmm. you know, my cats will put it in its place or eat it. Maybe um, I shouldn't get one. 3D glasses <laughs> on a praying mantis made of beeswax. You know, science. And, I and this points I for being creative. It's and this cool. idea that, that just because we wanted to find out how they do it, we found out an entirely different way of creating stereoscopic vision and creating depth perception, something that had been theorized before. It wasn't like this, nobody had ever thought of this, but you weren't quite sure how it would work in reality right. until this study. And now you do. Now you're like, oh, it works like it does for a mantis. We, we, we've got data now that we can use to implement this. It's really cool. It's really, really, really cool. So what's next? Okay, the praying mantises and then, you know, <laughs> do mice get little? <laughs> well, yeah. So, so because mice, 
mice have similar i would guess i didn't look into this either but mice i think have similar 3d vision to us yeah uh but could this be used to create because when you said mice it made me think of testing could this be used to create 3D vision for people who've lost their depth perception? Could you simulate 3D vision for someone who's missing an eye and doesn't have natural stereoscopic vision? I mean, uh, there's all kinds of other possibilities here as well. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, if you have one eye, you, you can see, you know, but it's like, I've always thought like, gosh, isn't it hard to drive though? Because there's that depth yeah. perception that you just, you know, you can't, you can't. Replicate. It's difficult. But this would be, this would be um, possibly a solution for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. The Wall Street Journal reports that sources say Amazon is launching its shipping service for business in LA in the coming weeks. LA is in Los Angeles. Shipping with Amazon will be available to four companies selling goods on the Amazon marketplace. The company has tested the program in places like London, and the Wall Street Journal says Amazon hopes to expand it to multiple cities this year. Yeah, so, so if, if you're if you're wondering what the this isn't shipping to you. Well, it is shipping to you, but it's not shipping you can go buy. It's not like a competitor to FedEx in that way yet. It's I work with Amazon. I sell things on Amazon. So now instead of Amazon, uh, you know, delivering them on, on one end from the warehouse, Amazon will now pick them up from me directly, just like a FedEx or a UPS would. Yeah, exactly. uh, That's actually kind of cool, especially if you're bringing more competition to the market, because I know personally from dealing with the hack shop, how expensive shipping can get, uh, especially if you're selling tons and tons of different weights and different devices and different sizes for your packaging, like it can get very expensive. So having Amazon consider becoming a competitor in that market is, is really huge. And I hope it lowers costs. And and we will see this as the th the beginning, the thin end of the wedge, if you will, uh, for Amazon becoming a shipper. This is how Amazon Web Services started, if you think about it. At first, Amazon was just, wow, we've got you know so much data with those books we sell. Uh, we we need to create our own uh, big data serving just for us. Right. Uh, and then they're like, well, I guess we could use it for our third party sellers. Oh, wait, now we are one of the largest cloud service providers in the world. This is how they become one of the largest shippers in the world. They already lease uh, airplanes and, and, and cargo ships. Uh, and uh, in fact, we asked uh, Big Jim, who does Tech and Trade a podcast, and he says, this is what I would expect Amazon to do for short haul deliveries. They're doing what's called port skipping for the other stuff, but opening to sales from their site gives them the infrastructure that they need to test, then opening for all B2B and B2C, which is business to consumer shipments, gives them experience. Just doing it in LA, it makes sense also because it's a wide metro area with enough volume to really stress test, but they probably won't go to full-blown cross-country operation until their air hub in Cincinnati is done. Uh, and that, that's when they'll be able to handle this for everybody. So are we going to start seeing like Amazon Prime next hour delivery in more places than just like the large cities? <laughs> that, yeah, no, that's a fair question because uh, r right now the hour deliveries have to come from a city that has a warehouse full right. of the things that will make this happen. If they can calculate, hey, wait a minute, that's one of our businesses that does shipping through us. Yeah, it might open it up to more products and possibly more cities. Right. Yeah. And given like how how quick consumers are like, Where's my product? I feel like it would be a really good thing to have that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and but here's the downside: Do we want Amazon to be competing with FedEx and UPS and DHL and 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 all the other shippers around the world? You know, I mean, that's from, the thing with Amazon, standpoint. right? Is like. You know, back in the day, it's like, do we really want, you know, the, you know, Amazon to like put the bookstores out of business? It's, and, and it's like, we really want Amazon running, you know, grocery chains. Well, yeah, it's, you know, prices go down, it's convenient. Mm, yeah, books are cheaper. Do we really want Amazon, you know, taking, you know, a cut of FedEx's um, uh, bottom line? It's like, I don't know. I mean, every time Amazon does something like this, the convenience factor of it seems to outweigh, you know, the discomfort in Amazon being so powerful because they just do so many things so well. Mm -hmm. They have the yeah. power and the capacity to be able to make it actually work as opposed to like, you know, some companies that get out there and try to do shipping for a local area and they're terrible at it. Like it's, 
I'm sure it's not their fault, but they just lack the the necessary equipment, the necessary training or whatever it might be to make it happen the way that like FedEx and UPS do. So I'm I'm looking forward to it very much. <laughs> I don't see it as a negative at all. Wait for uh, UPS to get into web cloud services and uh, and start uh, retail shops. I mean, they already have <laughs> UPS stores, right? Just maybe right, start selling yeah. books. Take that, Amazon. <laughs> Uh, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, subscribe to Daily Tech Headlines, newly available in the Australian Amazon Echo Skills Store as of yesterday. Uh, and hopefully, fingers crossed, if we got our translations right, big thanks to Big Jim uh, for helping us with this, uh, should be coming to the German store soon. The podcast will still be in English, uh, but I think we figured out the problems getting into the stores. The description had to be in German. So anyway, Amazon Echo is a skill also available on Google Home uh, and in the Anchor app. And of course, as a regular old podcast at DailyTechHeadlines.com. So how did we get here to this auspicious day when <laughs> Uber and Waymo have declared peace? Uh, I've got the timeline uh, Sarah's going to go through what the actual settlement was, and then Shannon's going to help us make sense of this. Here's what you missed if you haven't been following this. Anthony Lewandowski worked for Google's self-driving car effort. That is the effort that later became Waymo when Alphabet was created and they chopped up Google into different companies. The self-driving car business became Waymo. But Lewandowski worked for that business. Now, he allegedly, and because this court case did not finish. We don't have proof of whether he did or he didn't, although Uber kind of admits that they think he did. But he allegedly took more than 14,000 confidential files in December 2015. Here's the thing. A simple engineer checking out his own code might do that. Or someone who has a nefarious plot to steal trade secrets might do that. We also don't know if these 14,000 files were even actually trade secrets. The jury was going to decide all of that. Now it won't. So it's, it's up for question. Uber executives did meet with Lewandowski several times uh, before he left Google, at the last time being January 14th, 2016. Could be just an employee checking out a potential change of employment or a dastardly scheme to rip off Google. We don't know. Uh, but again, a jury will not decide this now. Lewandowski, the day after his January 14th meeting with Uber, started 280 Systems, which later became Auto. Lewandowski then quit Google without notice on January 27th. And then later in August, Uber acquired Auto. It denies it ever received any of Waymo's files from Lewandowski. On December 13th, 2016, so the end of this year-long saga, Lewandowski leaves Google in January, gets acquired in August. In December, December 13th, a Waymo employee is inadvertently copied on an email from a third-party vendor that includes machine drawings of Uber's LiDAR circuit board. And that employee says, those look familiar. And all of this blows up. Uh, Waymo sued Uber on February 23rd of last year, so not quite a year ago. Lewandowski was fired by Uber in May 2017, after he declined to waive his Fifth Amendment rights, he was going to go on trial on the on the, the witness stand next week, uh, and and Fifth Amendment rights might have been invoked then as well. And then don't forget that Travis Kalanick stepped down as CEO in June 2017, uh, and Derek Shahi took over as CEO eventually. And this trial began just earlier this week, February 5th. And we already have a settlement. Now, Sarah, what, what did they settle? Yeah, so five days in, uh, it came quick. So this was announced by Judge Elsop shortly before the fifth day of testimony was set to begin, which was today. Case is now dismissed, as we mentioned earlier. Lewandowski has had been scheduled to take the stand on Monday. So the timing of all of this is interesting. Uber will give Waymo 0.34% of its equity. Now, that comes out to about $245 million dollars with you know with what uber is worth right now so that's 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 you know that's a bit of a drop in the bucket this is in addition to a previous investment in uber that was made in 2013 by waymo now uber promises to quote ensure that any waymo confidential information is not being incorporated into uber advanced technologies group it's hardware and software and then uh C ceo karashahi said while we do not believe that any trade secrets made their way from waymo to uber nor do we believe that uber has used any of waymo's proprietary information in its self-driving 
and technology. We're taking steps with Waymo to ensure our, our <coughs> LiDAR and our software represents just our good work. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, we have Uber not admitting fault, which Waymo really wanted them to do. That's one of the things they wanted. Uh, but agreeing not to use any of Waymo's technology uh, without licensing it. So right. Waymo gets a further stake in Uber and, and therefore can benefit from its success. And they also possibly, Shannon, could make some money off licensing this material. It's not that it's mm -hmm. not that Uber can never use it. It just means they, they can't use it without Waymo's permission, right? Right, exactly. And I think that's part of what the settlement comes down to. Uh, but with this settlement, I believe that a lot of people were very surprised that they even agreed to this only five days after the case had just started, uh, which is kind of crazy, uh, especially since most folks were expecting it to go on for at least another week, if not two weeks after this. Uh, so it's it ended quite quickly and qu quite uh, suddenly for most people. Uh, with that said, though, there's a lot of things to think about uh, with the settlement, with the court case in general, and how this could impact the future of startups and the future of digital data sharing and how trade secrets are going to be implemented going forward, especially for employees of a lot of these larger companies that are in charge of these kind of things. So I think that we should talk about a few implications here. Um, first off, with companies hiring employees from Google and from Facebook and from all these different larger data sharing companies, uh, they need to start considering doing some kind of due diligence when it comes to acquiring any kind of startups. Like, say there's another auto that comes along. They need to make sure that they are doing some kind of diligence to ensure that they aren't also <laughs> bringing on trade secrets that they shouldn't necessarily have uh, access to. So these companies are going to need to improve their processes, uh, whatever is involved with acquiring those startups so that they aren't suspected of, you know, stealing trade secrets and actually using them uh, against a competitor. And I believe that that's going to be a huge issue, especially here in you know, the state of California. Um, currently, I believe one of the laws are that you can go to another employee that is a competitor and there is no law against that. So if, if you want to go to a competition uh, in the state of California as an employee, you're totally okay to do that. But you cannot also bring trade secrets with you and use those at the new company. So there's a lot of potential issues that employees and employers are also going to see. Yeah, this is one of the reasons companies want those clauses that prevent you from working for a competitor, right. because then they're less worried about you taking 14,000 files of what may or may not be trade secrets along with right. you, right? <laughs> uh, but since in the state of California, there's been an intense campaign to say, no, employees have the right to go work for competition. You can't stop them. They have the right to do that. Uh, you, you, this is now where the line is going to be drawn. And in, in that sense, it's unfortunate that we didn't get a jury trial because you don't have a precedent on that particular part of the issue. It's exactly. also funny that, you know, even though Uber has said this entire time, like, hey, we didn't do anything wrong. It's like, we didn't do anything wrong, but here's $245 million, uh, a promise in writing that we won't steal your trade secrets and we still didn't do anything wrong, but you know. I mean, agreeing not to use their secrets is easy if you don't have their secrets, right? right Why not? Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like, didn't you already agree not to? You're like, claiming that you didn't. <laughs> if I'm Uber and I really don't have those files, I'm like, yeah, sure. No, we won't use your secrets. That's easy. Uh, the, the rest is hush money, right? The rest is like, just go away. There's some other embarrassing things that were going to come out. Well, and right. we're Uber. Like a lot of things settled out of court, right? We have enough embarrassing things. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's like, no, you can't prove that Uber like gave, you know, Waymo hush money to go away. But it's like, there's always that question of like, well, if it was really going to just be like a drain on, you know, energy, like, okay, you could, you know, throw money at the problem. Or if you actually did something wrong and this is just, you know, the way that you're settling it, then that's a possibility too. And and my my guess is that Waymo didn't wasn't confident that it could connect the dots, mm -hmm. uh, that, that it was going to have a hard time. Like, it, and, and also said, Lewandowski's not on trial. Uh, Uber is on trial. And I think Waymo was like, we've got Lewandowski dead to rights, but can we connect him to Uber? And I think they were having a hard time being able to prove the connection to Uber, maybe because he didn't. Maybe Lewandowski took the files, but never did give them to Uber. 
This also worries me from a security standpoint as far as those kind of trade secrets go, because so many of these large companies have access to so much much consumer data. So what what are we going to see companies doing uh, in the future to protect their consumers whenever employees decide to change companies or decide to change to a different employer? I, I wonder because... And, and I, I wish there were some engineers that could maybe explain this, but I've heard from other engineers that like what Lewandowski did could have been perfectly innocent. Like if you've been working on stuff, you check out your code. Uh, those 14,000 files might not be trade secrets at all. It may mm -hmm. be what just every engineer does uh, when he gets to the end of a job. And I wonder if what happened was Lewandowski designed a LiDAR from the ground up for Uber, but because he also designed the one from Waymo, they look pretty similar because, hey, it's Lewandowski. Like, and, and what are <laughs> you going to do brain. there? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's, that's, that's one of the, the, the problems here, but yeah, Uber did not admit wrongdoing. They did admit that there were, that they should have done better in their due diligence in hiring Lewandowski and, and their, their relations with him. Um, but man, if you're Derek Kozra Shahi, you're, you're having a, a big lunch today and and cheers because this, <laughs> this was a big one that you you want behind you you've got plenty else to deal with hey thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit you can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and at facebook.com slash groups slash daily tech news show we're wrapping up the week with the thing of the day what do we have sarah oh uh, yeah this is actually really cool so last year lyft launched a program called roundup and donate so the idea is that you take a lyft ride it's you know six dollars thirty five cents. You opt in in your Lyft app to round up to seven, and then that extra money can go to a variety of charities. So uh, you can choose which causes you want to support. There are some new partners. Black Girls Code has been added to the list. Other options include Stick Kids Foundation, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Health Alliance for Austin Musicians, Chicago Public Schools, New Chance Fund, the ACLU, the World Wildlife Foundation, the Human Rights Campaign, the USO, Habitat for Humanity, and Girls Who Code. So which is amazing because this is something I actually do within my Bank of America um, app. Bank of America will let you like, uh, you know, basically like take several cents to like go into uh, another account. And then I use that to donate to stuff when there's enough money in there. Um, but that's actually something that I've sort of cobbled together to have this in a lift ride, especially if you're you're taking them uh, regularly, where it's like, you know, it's sense that you're not really seeing anyway, right? This is all happening in the back end, the payment part of it. Um, it's nice to have these options. Good on yeah. lift. I like that they do it. I like that it's opt in. And I like that they have a, a variety of, of different charities from the USO to Black Girls Code. I mean, that's that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, if it same. wasn't opt in, it would be <laughs> you were going to donate to. The well, campus. no, I mean, they might have turned it on and asked you every time you did a ride. I, mean, I like that, that it's not it's not going to yeah. be in your face like that. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's check in with Len Peralta, who has been illustrating this episode. What do you have for us, Len? Well, you know, some weeks I come up with amazing, amazing thoughtful drawings. Uh, this is not one of those weeks. Um, I, it's a, it's a <laughs> pun-filled uh, image about Waymo and Uber. Of course, Waymo and Uber, Uber came to a $245 million settlement today. That's honestly way more than they thought they'd get. And this that. is truly Waymo Uber news than we'd ever need. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. And there's a dude here saying, kill this man. Who's wearing, by the way, a tiny mantis shirt with the 3D glasses. Which Aww. is my favorite part of the whole drawing. Oh, so, I love it. Uh, <laughs> you have to go check I want, it out over at lenperaltstore.com. Where, by the way, uh, you can men uh, you can also pick up uh, this as a digital print and also uh, a bunch of other DTNS stuff from the past couple of years, especially from last year's The Best Of couple things, version uh, you know versions of those. So uh, check it out, lenperaltstore.com. Excellent. Excellent. Shannon Morris, thank you for joining us this lovely Friday. What do you got going on and where can folks keep up? Thank you. Um, I do a couple of shows on the internet. I do Tech Thing, T-E-K Thing, which you can find over at techthing.com. Um, that is my cat, if you are watching the video. <laughs> I just reviewed this really weird thing called a Pet Cube Bites that flings treats across the room when it, <laughs> through an app on your smartphone. So you can like play with your cat while you're away from home or your dog if your dog doesn't eat the device 
which is always a possibility since it'll have treats inside of it. So that was a good time. It was really fun. And uh, I also do security news. So if you're interested in learning about what's going on in security, you can check out ThreatWire, uh, which is also Patreon supported. So thank you to my uh, Patreons, patrons that are also Patreoning DTNS. Uh, recently, I talked about Autosplate, uh, which is a automated tool for hacking. And uh, it's very interesting. And I gave some of my own personal opinions on whether it's just for script kitties or if it's actually useful. Well, thank you, Shannon, and thank you to our patrons uh, who support us uh, in all kinds of ways. You can find out all the ways to support the show at dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. You want to get some Len art, there's a level with some free Len art at patreon.com slash DTNS. And we got all kinds of new things in the DTNS store, including the new logo, the old logo, t-shirts and hoodies with new color options, v-neck options for t-shirts, also the return of the DTNS flask, and of course, DTNS decals for your laptop. It's all there at dailytechnewsshow.com slash store. Talk to us. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is just one way to do so. We're also live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC at alphageekradio.com and diamondclub.tv. And our website, our website is dailytechnewsshow.com. Shocker. Back on Monday with Veronica Belmont. Talk to you then. part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Great show. What should we call it? Good show. <coughs> I think it's Waymo Uber. Now, when I said the praying mantises, I also thought it was praying manti, but praying mantises were mean isn't the lady mantis the one who eats the man after they yes yeah. after yeah. they after they That's do what, it i was alluding to that and everyone was like what do you mean they're mean and i was like well, well i don't know Maybe I'm not, i almost just... said i almost said i mean i know they eat their mates but the mates expect that that's not being mean that's just part of <laughs> life I was like i was like if for some reason I'm, i've got the <laughs> bug wrong like everyone's gonna be like no they don't it's all right uh, no, no. <laughs> um, well it's because it's with bees the male mates with the queen like a bunch of them and then they fly off and die oh my that's just you know that's just how it works that's love though in the bee world love that's not love that's <laughs> yeah, efficiency you know, they're, it's it's cultural yeah exactly cultural thing. you're a human you wouldn't understand no. <laughs> Your 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 non compound eyes can't see the multifaceted. <laughs> so, so this is, you and your two legs and other here's limbs. Here's my, ne my next question, um, because I, and I know I could look this up, but it's more fun to ask you guys. Sure. Um, so if the lady mantis eats the male mantis, and then she has a baby mantis, mm -hmm. and it's a another lady, mm -hmm. aren't they going to wipe themselves out? Well, I I'm <laughs> going to guess, and I don't know either, that the answer is uh, you have more than one offspring yeah. that it's a ah, brood of they, eggs they, right. they lay, the they lay a brood of eggs <sighs> yeah yeah okay. they don't they don't bear live young and like they don't go around killing male mantises it's just after they do it so well, no, but i'm like, like no but i know what sarah's you know, saying if they only had one offspring you've taken then, away a male well, isn't it yeah. like those crayfish that they found the one that clones itself it doesn't need to be fertilized by a male it just lays eggs that are just exact duplicates of it like well, and like and uh, um, coral reefs can uh, re reproduce sexually or asexually, and they reproduce asexually when they have to. But that's one of the problems with coral reefs being Done. reduced is that they lose genetic diversity if they're forced to always reproduce asexually. Mm. Uh, uh, marijuana well, plants, male and female. Less the diversity. Female ones but... are the ones that people want. Is that right? It's true. I didn't know yeah. that. Sexist. All right. Self-settling lawsuit. Self-settling lawsuit's pretty good. I like, I like that, that one. Yeah, I like that one. Of course, the Waymo, Waymo than they thought they'll get. Yes. Um, uh, Amazon Prime next hour delivery. Amazon has the power. Waymo hush money. That's a pretty <laughs> funny one. So that's, I only have like 12 titles right now. Yeah. So. Self-settling lawsuit, I like the there. best. That's me. Which one? Self-settling lawsuit. Like, instead of self-driving yeah. car, it's a self-settling lawsuit. Yeah, I like that one, too. That's my vote. 
Do-do-do-do-do. Done. Self-settling lawsuit it is. So um, right before the show, I, I was going to tell you guys something cool, and then I realized I didn't have enough time. Yeah, and now you um, forgot what it so, is. Oh, no, good. Oh. Um, and cheer. Right before, uh, uh, when I moved into this apartment building, which was like two years ago, there was like a little thing above my front, my front door, but like within the building itself. It was just like, I don't know, it looked like a little trinket or doodad or it's just something that somebody had stuck above the door and I never really thought about it you know I thought like oh yeah whoever that was you know forgot to take it or whatever and then today a friend came over this morning and he was like what is that that you have above your door you know what does it symbolize and I was like I don't know never really thought about <laughs> it so I decided to think about it and it's so if you it's sort of like this octagon with a little mirror in the middle and it oh, turns I out know what that is it's that it's Chinese. a feng shui bagua yeah, no, oh. it's Chinese. You use that to ward off uh, uh, evil energy or bad yeah, energy. Yeah, which is like you do when you have a kid. You put, you, time. When you have a when oh, typically not typically, but traditionally, if you ha- had a, a child, you would put a, a, a bunch of small small one of those around the baby to ward off uh, the bad energy, so that you know your kid wouldn't be filled with bad luck. What's it called again? A a bakwa mirror. A bakwa. Like B A G U A. Bagua. You know, it's funny because Ed Sheeran's song was originally called I'm in love with the shape of your Bagua. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I don't think that's appropriate in feng shui world. (laughs) No, probably. No, it's really cool because it's like, anyway, I I read a couple articles about it this morning because I was like, you know, if I had to guess, like I might have said like, oh, it's some like Turkish thing to ward off, you know, like evil eye or exactly. something. Exactly. Even though I I know what those look like and it didn't look like that, and I was yeah, like, yeah. I don't think it's anything. But it actually turns out it's it it was very deliberately put there by somebody, and, and now still working. I reap the benefits. <laughs> well, it depends. You need to. It has to go along with the the way you arrange your furniture too. What are you trying to like, say, Roger? So, well, the mirror was probably put there because they had probably an opening from the window straight to the door that they wanted to kind of reflect. Oh, well. The whole idea that's is that when you have, or they the didn't know what they were doing. The whole idea is that you don't want you don't want positive energy to go straight through your home. You want it to kind of bounce around as many times as po- or like to stay as long as possible in your home, right? And so you don't like, for example. Chinese generally avoid homes that have like uh, a front door at the bottom of steps because it just signifies energy goes straight out the front door, huh. right? You you don't you don't want easy access mm-hmm. or uh, simple access for your energy to flow out. My mom has this whole thing. She, I remember when she was buying when uh, when she was when we were house they were my parents were house hunting. She would not buy a house because the numbers uh, ended mm. with the. Uh, uh, number four, mm-hmm. which is a homonym for death in mm. Mandarin. Mm, yeah, mm. yeah. I don't buy any houses that end uh, with death. I don't <laughs> buy any number. houses that have too many zeros at the end, like mm. that. You know, forty six twenty death <laughs> Maple Street. Not gonna buy that one. Kill, no, kill, I don't kill. buy houses that are like <laughs> expensive. <laughs> that either. I don't buy houses at all. <laughs> I don't buy houses that end in seven zeros. I don't buy your <laughs> argument, Tom. There. <laughs> <laughs> I was very excited about my Bakwa mirror, though. That's cool. And, and yeah. Feng Shui is like, I mean. So, so now you just got to adapt to what yeah, Roger was saying. Yeah, or you just get like, more of those mirrors. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, some, there's like how to books if you're really into it. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, I, I use that term. I throw it around very loosely because sometimes you're sort of just like, you know, like a room. You're like, something's wrong here. Like, I got to, you know, mm-hmm. it's almost like. My, when my rooms were not flipped the way they were now, it was like something was always kind of wrong, you mm-hmm. know? And like, I could have put my finger on it and then I switched things around and I'm like, oh, it's way better now. And then but after I, you, you know, switched... Which is, is more complex than that. But. After you switched, you discovered the Bagua. I think that's a good sign. <laughs> hmm. Well, you should go I, play I, a lottery. My, my, go buy a lottery ticket. My heart was opened to it, whereas yeah. I had only ignored it before. If you if you buy a lottery ticket and it's a winning ticket, that means you're you're inching forward. No fours in your number, though. You know what? A Chinese person so will rules. take four million dollars. <laughs> right? <It> does. <laughs> so whatever. Would you take death million dollars? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How much is that exactly? I uh, I like the evil eye. 
that Malta has. It's like just cool looking. And they use it as theft prevention, which turns out has a basis in science. So the really? idea is you put the evil eye up. It's not just for theft, but it's to protect you. And stores will put the evil eye up to stop shoplifters. And it turns out they've done studies that when there are even just pictorial representations of eyes, people behave better. Just yeah, on or, they doesn't, it, yeah, it doesn't prevent all bad behavior. It's not that good, but it definitely reduces it. That's interesting. Because, you know, yeah, there's just a natural, like, ooh, I feel like I'm being watched. I'm not going to do that. I remember when I was a kid in San Francisco, a couple of the Greek delis used to have those, in the, like, like right behind the register, like above. And I always wonder. I thought it was just kind of a, a, like a decoration. Maybe it was, but it's a popular thing around the Mediterranean. Yeah. The old ways are best. Well. Yes, bloodletting for all not. illnesses. <laughs> <laughs> bloodletting <laughs> so yeah leeches leeches are the only treatment i use i mean come on only one president died from it that's just a t- t- statistical anomaly and think of how many presidents we've had now leeching <laughs> there by that argument leeching gets uh better all the time yeah fewer and fewer percentage of our presidents have died from leeching every time we elect a new <laughs> one well that's good yeah our number of presidents dead from leeching is plummeting. In fact, Ooh, more presidents I've done have been a, shot I've to done death a feng than have leech today. Feng shui uh, no no. Oh no! What'd you do? What'd you do? Because I have a bunch of mirrors in my house, right? Because Roger's t- talking about reflection and keeping mm-hmm. the energy, you know, making the most of it. You know, I'm okay. like, well, I actually have a lot of mirrors, so I'm not supposed to put a mirror. I'm I'm not. Sp- I'm supposed to avoid placing a big mirror directly facing the main door. Mm. Hmm. I have no oh, yeah, that just bounces it. Instead of the energy coming in, it just goes back out the front door. It also freaks you out every time you come in your house. Oh wait, directly facing. No, no, no. I was thinking on the looking if I'm looking directly, I'm looking at both of them. Okay, no, I'm safe again. You're okay. All okay. right. Woo. Good. That was close. Woo, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna have to redecorate. <laughs> like you don't want to open the door and have like a vanity mirror, like even if it's in like a Right, uh, yeah. Foyer, like staring back at you because you want to look at yourself. And, and you don't want stairs directly in front of yeah, a Yeah, you don't want your door. stairs case to end at the front door like some yeah. houses. Mm-hmm. So many stairs. houses do that. You also don't want your bed on the stairs. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> oh. And if you have doors, like like for example, my house has like, you know, it leads straight through the front door into the dining room. They're, but they're double doors. So in some cases, you just close the door and it's fine. Oh, my apartment building stairs go right up to my front door. Maybe that's what this whole thing was all about. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Somebody in the building cares. Just take that energy right back down the stairs. <laughs> you take that energy right back where you came from. <laughs> <Right with. at laughs> the strangest house layout was my old girlfriend's house. I remember you opened the door, you entered the uh, front room which was very, very small, off the front room, right on, like on the back wall, two bedrooms right there. Wow. Mm-hmm. It was very strange. It was her bedroom and her sister's bedroom. Like, and it was, it was weird. <laughs> like, was that is odd. music playing at night? Uh, no, it was like, no, her dad. Yeah. Her dad sat, watched TV in the room. You walked in, you opened the front door. He's sitting over to your right. And but he'd been room. dead for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's right. They had a bunch of zeros at the end of their address. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. Very strange layout. They though. just moved the. They just moved the mailboxes. No, the headstones. You just moved the, the headstones. Yeah, I never buy any house with headstones in the back. <laughs> no. Is anybody going to Gallifrey One next weekend? I Where's might be. Ooh, you should. Yeah. You Are you coming it? down? Yeah, That's I do have a ticket. Sweet. I'm a oh, cosplay too. Oh, tickets are sold out. Can't oh, nice. Go. Too late well, for me. you could if you wanted to, Roger, talk to me because <laughs> I believe Eileen's not going to go and she also has a ticket. Oh, oh well, I'll, there you I'll go. buy it off you. Yeah. Then I'll just be by myself. Well, no, because I'm going to go too. Oh. <laughs> hey, I'm going to be there with my hubs and, and Right, and Shannon's going to go. Yeah, and 
Delahanty is going to be there. So scars for everyone. Fat emo kid's going to be there. Yeah, I'll be there with my sonic screwdriver in hand. I have two, and I don't know where they went since I packed <laughs> them up. Yeah, I have ah, two also. I'm just going to bring my Ace Hardware screwdriver. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm sorry. This where, actually where will work on going? something. Gallifrey One. It's a, Doctor, a Doctor Who, Who convention Who. down there in oh, LA. Oh, oh, oh God. Over by LAX. Yeah. Lax. It's a lax, lax. convention. When they get anybody they make the expansion to the uh, LA, LA airport, they'll call it X lax. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so excited. No, that's that's when they move the airport, and where it used to be will be called X lax. Uh, good times. Good times. Any it'll, last it'll words for our the amazing congestion. audience? Uh, you know what? I'm going to say thank you for a lovely week. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a great week. Fantastic. I'm going to say, don't forget to eat your lunch. <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a good week. Man, I am ready to catch up on some sleep this weekend, and I mm -hmm. hope the same for all of you. Me too. And I say dilly dilly. <laughs> dilly wait, is that we the We are Bud not Light? sponsored by Bud Light. <laughs> no. Bye. <laughs>